So today we're going to be making this animated side menu here in Elemental. It's a really, really cool one. If I click on this menu button over here, you can see how it opens up and everything does this whole really cool animation. If we hover over it, you can see how there's this whole animation as we hover as well. And also on the social links right over here, you can see this whole cool animation. Very, very awesome. And if we close it, you can see it just closes up nice and tidy. And yes, it does work in mobile. If you want to download the complete template for this tutorial, I do have the section in my website. You will find a link of the exact template in the description of this video. It will take you to the complete template download. You can just go download that template. Once you've downloaded the zip file, all you have to do is open it. Inside, you're going to find the actual template and this PDF of how to install it as well. All we have to do is unzip this template. So we just drag it across. And then inside the WordPress website, you'd go into templates. You go into theme builder and here we're inserting the headers so we just click on the headers we can say add new and then you'll be inside the elemental page builder here if you don't have this library pop-up appear automatically then you can find it here and add templates icon and what we're going to do is say import up over here then that exact template file we just click and drag it across and then it'll upload it's going to give you this warning which is fine and standard for all templates to so say continue and now you can go and select the template that you've downloaded and just say insert and it'll do everything for you so let me show you how to make this in elemental so here in the back end of a wordpress website what we're going to do is we're going to go over to templates and we're going to go into the theme builder over here you can hover over this header you can click on this plus sign or if you go into the header section on the top right hand side we're just going to say add new so over here on this new screen we're not going to use any of these we're going to be making our complete own custom header so we can just close that now if you don't have your navigation window on the right hand side it is going to be this button over here that's going to pop this up. We are going to be referring to this a lot, so it's good just to have it open. I am very soon going to release all these tutorials as complete downloads on my website. So if you want to rather just download the complete thing, I'm going to have a nice proper structured version for every single tutorial. Not available just yet, but it will be soon. So let's start making this header right over here. So the first thing we need is going to be our first container. So we click on the plus sign, we can go down to container and we can just drag it across right there. Now for the settings of this main container, we're going to go into content width and we're going to say full width. And then the min height, we're going to keep it at pixels and we're going to say 80. Now the, the direction of this is going to be horizontal and we want everything center aligned. Now that we're done with all that, now we're going to go over to style. We're going to give this a background color. I'm going to keep mine as white. And then under border, I'm just going to give a bit of a shadow. It is my type of design style. You don't have to add it if you don't want to. I'm going to make this just a little bit darker. Around about a 75%. And we are good there. Because I made this 80 high, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to advanced. And under this margin, I'm going to unlink it. And this bottom margin, I'm going to say minus 80. So that the pages fit underneath this header. So, which is really cool if you want to have a transparent one for but for me in my designs it's just a habit now that i always put the pages underneath even if this thing is going to be white then for the padding i'm going to unlink this as well and i'm going to give a right and left padding of 30. now if we scroll down just a little bit more under position we're going to change this to fixed we can leave everything else like that the same for the z index we're going to put this as 100 and we're going to go and put in a custom class name here now in the description of this video, there's going to be a reference page on my website and everything you need is going to be on that page and it's literally copy and paste. So here's that page. If we scroll down, you're going to see here is the four CSS class names and then here is all the code that makes everything work. So the first one we're going to need is this very first one here of reboot side menu area. We just copy that, go back into the editor and we can paste that here under the CSS classes. Now that we're done with that, the last thing that we're going to have to worry about so if we go into this padding again and we change it from desktop to mobile, we are going to change this real quick. Over here, we're unlinking the padding and for the right and left, I'm going to say 15. Now we can go back into desktop view and we can carry on. So the next thing we're going to add into this is going to be the image widget and two containers. The image widget is for the logo. You can just use the logo widget, but I like the image one more because you have more controls there. So this is add those three things now. So I'm going to click on this plus sign. I'm going to go over to the image drag it over let go get the two containers put it next to it let go and duplicate this one here just like that okay so now let's concentrate on that image so we click on the image all the settings are here i'm going to choose my logo which is this one here 
and say select. Now for the link, I'm gonna change this to custom URL. I'm gonna choose this icon of dynamic tags. I'm gonna say it's the site URL. Then for the size, I'm gonna put this at 150 by 150. We don't really need more than that. Once we've done with that, I'm gonna go over to style and on this height, I'm gonna give this a height of 55 pixels. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to the next container. So if we click on that, we're gonna be concentrating on these settings over here. Now this is gonna be the container for the buttons itself. So for the width of this, we're gonna set this to 110 and then the height is going to be 45. And now if we go into mobile view, we're gonna change these as well. So for width, we're gonna change to pixels. We're gonna say this is 95. And for the min height, we're gonna make sure it's in pixels. And we're going to say that this is 38. Then if we come down to gaps, we're gonna set this to zero. And then if we go to additional options, the overflow, we are going to say hidden. Now under style, if we go down to the border, I'm gonna give this a border radius of about 23. Then the next thing we're gonna do is gonna to go to advanced. And this padding, I'm just gonna set it to zero. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna scroll down to position. I'm gonna change this to absolute. I'm gonna make sure this is on the right hand side because it's going to be the buttons over there. And then I'm gonna give this a PX of 35. The top I'm gonna to keep the same. The top I'm gonna to stay at top. And then the pixels are gonna be about 20. When you design this, it is gonna look a bit off because what this does is actually looks at the complete top of the page and it ignores the WordPress stuff. So don't worry, in the front end, it is going to look right. Now this is going to need its own class name. So if we go into the reference page, the very next thing that we're going to be using is this reboot the side menu button. We're going to copy that and we're going to paste this into the class name of this container. Now that we have the class name, something I just want to do very quickly here in the Z index, I'm going to set this to 20 just to make sure that it's above everything else. And it's also going to be above the third container that we're going to work with. Now we can go and concentrate on the third container. Now this is going to house the actual main menu. Now we're on the settings of this. We're going to change this to full width. We're going to change the width to pixels and we're going to say this is 480 pixels now if we go under style we're going to leave the background alone we're going to go to background overlay so if we click on that here we can actually do the gradient or you can do a solid color like if you see in my menu here's got this gradient background so over here i'm going to choose gradient i'm going to look for a yellow that should be fine over there and then for the second color, I'm going to choose an orange. That one should be fine there. And then the type, I'm going to say radial. And the opacity is going to be completely one. If we scroll down more, I'm going to go over to border radius. And I'm also going to give this a radius of 23. Okay, now we're done with that. We're going to go over to advanced. The padding, we're going to set to zero. And then under position, we're going to say that this is absolute on the right hand side. And I'm going to say that this is 10. And I'm going to say this is minus five. Now here we're going to need a CSS class name. So in my reference page, it's this third one, this reboot side menu, copy that and we'll paste it right here. While we're here, we do need to actually set the Z index of this. So I'm going to set this to 10 just to make sure it's on top of other things and doesn't interfere with anything. Okay. So now that we've done with all the settings, I do see this image is a bit funny. So I'm just going to click on this image quickly. I'm going to go to the style and this object fit what i'm going to do is i'm going to say it must be contained that's way better okay now we got all that out the way let's concentrate on the second container so in the second container what we're going to add here is two buttons the one's going to be for opening the menu and one's going to be closing the menu so let's go and get those two buttons over here go down to buttons put it across and let go if it's in the wrong place like you can see over here you just drag it over into the second container and then we should be all good. And then over here, then I'm just going to duplicate this button. Now we're going to click on the first button and we're going to constrain that. For the text, I'm going to say this is menu. And then we're going to stylize this thing. So we're going to click on style. Here we can change the typography if we want. So I'm going to say that this is maybe an 18. And I'm going to make sure that everything is uppercase there. Maybe I'll make it just a little bit less in weight. And that should be fine. Okay, so now we're going to go into the color type. I did make this as a gradient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and copy the colors of this menu and then I'll just paste it over here. So if I go to the container in a style and we go to overlay, then I can just copy these colors over onto this button itself, just like that. And then I'm going to get the second color, go to overlay, get that orange, go back to that first button and I'm going to paste it as its second color. Now the angle is fine. It's at 180. Okay, and that's pretty much everything that we're gonna need for this. 
Now, if we go on the second button, we're going to be doing the same thing. So we're going to be doing the settings of this one. So on the second button, I'm going to change this default text to close. And under style, I'm going to do it the opposite of the actual menu one. So if I click on this first button, I'm going to copy these colors for this gradient. So I'm going to copy this yellow, go over to the second button, make sure it's on gradient, and then go to the second color here and paste it. So what happens is when it actually changes, it's going to change the actual colors to flip them over. So I'm going to click on the first button again to get that second color, go over to the second button and put it into the first color. And then let me just change the typography here. So I'm going to click on that, make sure it's 18 and do the same thing as the menu, uppercase and the weight 400. Now for the border radius in that, what I'm going to do on both these buttons, I'm going to set them as zero and the padding is zero. This is going to be fixed up with the CSS. And then on the first button, I'm going to do the same thing under style. I'm going to put a zero and zero. Okay, so now we're done with the buttons. So now let's go and make that actual menu. In this third container, we need to add a final container here. So if we click on the plus sign, go to container and just put it inside this thing and let go. So you just make sure that in the container, if it's not, then just readjust it so it's in this third container. For the settings of the second container, what we're going to do is we're going to leave all this stuff as is over here. The gaps we're going to say it's zero and then we're going to go over to advanced. So over here, here we go de-link this. The margin on top, I'm going to say that this is 113 and then for the padding, I'm going to unlink it as well. I'm going to say that the right is 25, bottom is 50, and the left is 50. Then while we're here, we're going to go into mobile view, unlink the top, say that this one is 80, the rest is zeros. For padding, we're going to unlink this as well. I'm going to say that this is 25 on the right. I'm going to say it's 35 on the bottom. And I'm going to say 35 on the left. Now inside this container, we're going to need three things. We're going to need the HTML widget and two icon lists. So in this plus sign, we're going to look for HTML. We're going to put that inside. If it's not inside there, just grab it and put it inside that container. And now it's going to be those two icon lists. So we're going to click on the plus sign. We're going to look for the icon list, click and drag it. And if it's not in the right place, then we're just going to put it here underneath the HTML. And then, like I said, we need two. So I'm just going to duplicate it. Okay, so the HTML code, we're going to go fetch that just now. But we're going to concentrate now on the icon list. So the first one's going to be our actual pages. So now we can remove these first two over here because we're going to stylize this one and then just duplicate that. So if we click on that, we are going to change this icon over here to the arrow that we are looking for. So it's going to be this long arrow over here. It won't look exactly like this one when you're actually putting it in. But this, the code that we're going to put in will stylize this and take care of all of that for you. Now for the text of this, I'm going to say that this is going to be the home page. Then here under URL, all you'd have to do is paste the actual page. But here, because it's home, what we can do is say dynamic tags and then just say that this is going to be the site URL. But then any page like about us and that, just go get the URL and you can paste it in. So now that we're happy with that, this we can duplicate to as many pages as we need. So here I'm just going to be putting five. So for all these other ones, all we have to do is change the name and then the URL that that thing would go to. So this one, I'm going to say about us. This third one can be services. This fourth can be our work. Fifth can be careers. And then the sixth can be contact us. Okay, so now under style, we're going to give the space between at about 20. Anything we have to change under icon is the actual color. So the rest of the CSS is going to take care of that. Then under text, the first thing I'm going to do is change the color to black. And then a typography, I'm going to put this at 48. I'm going to say that this is uppercase. I'm going to say the line height is an EM of 1. And the letter spacing is an EM of minus 0.04. And just makes it look like that's a cool effect. Then while we're still over here, I'm going to go click on this desktop icon for the size. I'm going to change it to mobile and say this is a 36. And while we're here in mobile, there is something that we have to put in that's going to be pretty important later. So the very first of these two containers for this menu, if we click on this container here, we are going to go into layout and under width, we are going to go to this custom pencil and we're going to type something out over here. Over here, we're just going to calculate what the width is and make it just a little bit smaller than the width of the mobile device. So if you go and copy this calc with the brackets 100% minus 20 pixels and you close the brackets, that'll take care of the whole styling here of mobile. Okay, so now that we've done all that, we just have to go and do the last icon list. 
So let's go and click on that. We can do the same thing like what we did in the first one and we can just remove these and we can just stylize the one. So here we can remove these icons and this first one can be Facebook. And then here under link, you'd obviously give the link to your social page. And then we can just duplicate this to as many as we need. So here I'm just going to be adding four. So the second one can be Instagram, third one YouTube and fourth LinkedIn. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now if we go over to style, the space between we're going to set this to seven. The icon, we'll just change this to black. Not that it's important, but let's be consistent with the other one. And then under text, first we're going to set this to black. And then for the typography, I'm going to say that this is 18 pixels. The line height, I'm going to go to EM. I'm going to say this is a 1.3. And then the letter spacing, go to EM. And I'm going to say minus 0 0.05. Now, if we go over to advanced, we are going to delink this and we're going to say this top margin is 55 pixels just to give a space between the main menu and the social links. Now here we are going to put in the final class name. So if we go into my page, so if we go into my resource page, this last one over here, that reboot side menu social, we just copy that and we paste it here. Now that we've done all that, now we're going to put in the code that's going to power this whole thing. So we're going to be looking for this HTML widget, we're going to click on that. And then we're going to head over to my resource page and this code section over here, all we're going to do is copy this and in here we're going to paste it. Okay, so now we pasted the code, time to publish. Once you click publish, we come to this screen, we said add a condition and we can save for the entire site. You can ignore this one over here because I already have a, a custom header. So if you're like me and you have a different one, rather go into conditions of that one and just take that out as well. But here we just say entire site, save and publish. And let's go look at this at the front end. You can see this is how it's going to be looking like while we're logged in. While we're not logged in, it's going to look a lot better because this top menu piece is not going to be here and these absolute positions are going to work just fine. So don't have to worry that it looks a bit funny. So if we click on this menu button, there's our menu being displayed perfectly. As we hover over all these, all those animations are working just fine. Very cool menu. I do love it. It's ready mobile ready because we did all the settings. And I hope you enjoy. I hope you liked this video. If you did, smash that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing as well. That stuff makes a big difference to a small channel like mine. If you have any suggestions or anything, then just put a comment down below. Let me see what I can do. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.